everybody it's another episode of the dnvr rapids podcast it's a drawing room i'm your host mitchell carroll aka mitchell Ooh, not anymore though we're working on a nickname yeah. drop nickname ideas i i have one before we get started before we say okay. anyone i've been telling mitch this for about a week now he has to be big pit mitch big pit mitch is perfect it's who he is it's his vibe we got to get into him. Come on, guys. It was it was Big Mitch on uh, on Bets Forever, RIP to the greatest podcast of all time besides this one. Um, but, yeah, that guy with the good nickname idea that I can't give to myself, obviously, is Cowboy Super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are. What a game. What a get. You felt every bit of emotion as a Rapids fan in this one. You go up in the first half. Probably should have had two. I mean, who knows? If they give that Georgie penalty early, you might have two or three in the first half that Messi doesn't factor in. He comes in, does messy things, and literally in the span of two minutes, a beautiful goal, a beautiful assist. Um, but the Rapids punched back. The Rapids did not fold. Everything about this team over the last two years says this team folds up shop. They catch a huge transition goal from Cole Bassett to level it late. Hang on. Even have some chances for the win there. So much to talk about, yeah, yeah. But really, I just want to know how you're feeling right now. Oh, man. It's weird because I'm not mad. I should, I'm should. i usually upset no matter which team it is. But I just can't be mad at it this today. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, If anything, if I'm Miami, dude, I'm disappointed because you just went up against the Colorado Rapids, a team that everybody around the league disrespects highly called the worst team in the MLS constantly. And they just went into your house and proved that you're not better than them without Messi, and you're just as good as them with Messi on the pitch. The Rapids should be proud of this, dude. The Rapids don't <sighs> don't spend that money. Like, this is – if I'm Miami, I'm mad. If I'm Colorado, I'm like, yo – we're we're balling too, and we don't gotta pay the best player in the world. We don't gotta give them Apple uh, revenue. We're still doing pretty well, and you're not as good as us when when without Messi on the pitch, without Busquets, without Jordi Alba, you're not on the same level as us. And my and the Rapids proved that today. Uh, look, you're right. I don't like sure if you go down two one in that quick quick you know, that that bang-bang play from Miami where all of a sudden the whole game script is flipped on you. Uh, but instead of being like, okay, get Diak out there, you know, throw another defender out there, they go 4 2 2 2 right, which was the adjustment last week. They throw offense out there. They get speed out there. Kamani comes on. Calvin comes on. Yappy comes on. And they punched back. They punched back. And that, to me, is every, that That's everything to me. Right? Like, they're in the ring, and they get back up. And before this team under Robin Frazier for the last two years would have just laid on the mat and let the ref make the count and end the fight. Right? That was always what was going to happen. You knew it. And I think everybody watching this game, Rapids fans watching this game, probably were feeling like, oh no, is this where we see the old Rapids? Is this over? And not only was it not over, they had chances the other way, but after the cold goal, like it was, this was a fun game to watch and an encouraging game to watch if you're a Rapids fan. A hundred percent, man. I I think the Rapids played really well today. Again, there's still a lot of issues with this team. Yeah, of course there is. Like we can't, like we can't underestimate the final third and what's going on that you can't finish chances. You, that's we get that we know that every we'll rapid fan, too. yeah, every rapid fan know, knows it. But they, they defensively great first half. Oh, nothing happened. Nothing was there. There was 
one of the Miami players tried to outrun him, and I'm like, have you seen Bombi play? You're not outrunning Bombi, dude. Like, first of all, he has two strides on you before you can even look at the ball. Um, and then offensively, they tried stuff. They were trying to get the ball forward. They the midfield completely controlled into Miami's midfield. It took them bringing in three World Cup last players, <laughs> three guys that have won the Champions Leagues, that has been that have been out, that have won World Cups. That's what it took. For All my, three of them have won a World Cup. Yeah, exactly, that's crazy. It, it took that for them to get back into the game. Because honestly, I I mean this sincerely, I believe in the Rapids. Me too. I really do. But I was all I've heard leading up to this game, leading up to the season is Inter Miami is more than their big four. Inter Miami has a lot more players. Don't sleep on them, and clearly they're not. Like as soon like I don't care if they're coming off a of midweek. Everybody comes off those right. Messi Everyone. Gonna play I mean, it's about to happen to the Rapids it, uh, next month. They're gonna have two weeks. They're gonna play four games in whatever two weeks. You know, like Saturday to Saturday, like Wednesday to the next Saturday. It's coming up. Like no excuses. No excuses in the MLS, man. Exactly. Zero. And it's like I get like you guys can say whatever you want. Like and it's fine. Like uh, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on this. But that Miami team, man. If you don't have those guys out there, I don't think you, you got much in that team. And the Rapids yeah. proved it today. In the in if that was Miami's team out there without their four star players, I think the Rapids would have won this game easily. And that I mean, they should have won the game anyways. Like Georgie had that free kick. They had some chances. Kamani was making runs. Yappy was making runs. Like, look, it wasn't enough. That's what's crazy to me. Is look, they said, okay, look, we're gonna we're gonna hope we can win this in forty five. Right, like that was their get. That was Tata the whole time. We're gonna win this in forty five. Doesn't matter what happens in the first Tata half. Tata is also not a coach, dude. Like, You're right. He but, showed it to me today. Sure, like he is sure. not a dude. But he said we're gonna win this in forty five, and that mm-hmm. was their whole game plan. Was we're gonna win this in forty five, and it wasn't enough. That is what's crazy. Is it wasn't enough. Chris Armis, he hit every right button, made all the right subs. Uh, man, it uh, it's. That's just crazy to me. It wasn't yeah. enough. It wasn't enough. Not for these pesky Colorado Rapids. And that's what I mean. And, like, I'm talking a lot about Miami, but what I'm trying to get the point across is that the Rapids are just as good. No team in the league has the same talent as Miami. Nobody. And the Rapids just played them to a draw with uh, Messi and Busquets out there with Jordi Alba. Like, they just played them to a draw. And, like, that's something you want from the Rapids. That means the Rapids have the talent. They have the mentality, and they have the want to go out there and try to win every game. They're not just trying to lay back, let them do their thing. No, they want the wins. They care. They don't care who it is. Diak was dropping uh, Sergio Busquets. Kimani Stewart Baines was dropping Busquets. Like, they don't care who's out there. They just want to win, and that's all that matters as a Rapids fan. As somebody that loves the squad and everybody that hears this podcast, I'm sure you guys love them or else you wouldn't be here at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night hearing two dudes talk about a game you just watched. And that's what we want. Somebody that does it for the badge. They love the badge. They love what they're doing. And that's why we got to appreciate Armin's because he's building the mentality to be a good team. And the wow. one player you can see it the most from is Kim, it's um, Kevin Cabral. Just the complete mind shift the way he went from not wanting to run after the boss and not be that guy give me a minute no that's okay i'll I'll even pick up where you left off because look cabral i i think we said stock up a little bit stock up right and on our on our midweek show and he comes out and look he he's doing the right things except for the fact that he just is so concerned with contact right like he he's so concerned with finding contact he did it last year and i don't remember what game and i i'm sure i can find it sometime this week and i'll post it but literally this is the second time in a rapid jersey he he chose to dive instead of taking a one-on-one break against a keeper and it drives yep. me insane. It drives me so crazy. And we can maybe get into that later because I'm going to give it anti-flowers for it. But you're right that the mentality has changed. You see it in Kevin. I mean, you see it in Cole, 
really. I mean, I think, you know, and, and he had such a monster game. Um, for as much as the announcers want to go on with, oh, Georgie, you know, Georgie, he's dropped back. He's not going to get these touches. Oh, they need to figure out where to get these moments for Georgie, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you have a monster in the midfield with Cole right now. He is an absolute animal mm-hmm. tonight. He was everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, and just kind of like that, Georgie, you saw Messi, dude. Messi was like a pivot at the end, too. Like, it's normal for a 10 to drop back and try to get the ball and create something from the back. Mm-hmm. It's not out of this world if you have a player like that. I don't know why people make such a big deal of it when he drops back. Does he need the ball more at his feet? Yes, they need the Miami game plan where no matter where the ball was, they're like, where's Messi? All right, let's get in the ball. He'll do something. That's kind of what you got to do with Georgie, too. And it really helps out when you take that pressure off of him with a guy like Cole Bassett in that midfield, right? Where, like, you can get the ball to, to Georgie and then immediately get it back to Bassett, and it, you know something good's going to happen. And then you have Ollie LaRoss, man. Props to that guy. <sighs> and I mean this with all due love to Connor Ronan, man. The reason Connor Ronan has not been a good pivot for the Rapids is because of physicality. It's not yep. because of talent. Has not, I think he would make an incredible 10. I think he'd make a great double 10 up there, a double eight. But he's not physical enough in that midfield, and he gets pushed around, and that's when things happen, right? I wonder if in this new kind of late game transition to like a more – you know, leveled out squad four two 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 or whatever you want to say it turns into. If there's room for Ronan Georgie as their own level, right yeah. above, and maybe maybe you don't go with either striker or Yappy, who's a little more comfortable wide with a Cabral, with a Kamani, with a Harris. Um, you know, it's just it's uh, pretty. Uh, encouraging and i'm really curious where we'll get into connor ronan maybe that's a whole segment on the show this week because be. you're starting to see these these points where it's like man do we need a fourth midfielder out there it's like you know it's like because you can't take any of these guys off you saw i mean lamine got his first minutes tonight for a few minutes at the end just to play disruptor not enough he did a, i thought yeah, he did a good job in that one role they're like yeah. you know what we just want you to break up the play in the midfield and that's all we care about did well, his job did, what I what it really stood out with me in that spot with Lamine is he looks like B- Bombi just a little bit further up, so fast, getting in the way. Okay, but I just said Bombi, so now we have to talk, we have to talk about Bombi. We have to. Let, it's, I mean, it's this is now a right? Bombi no pod. It's like, this dude is everywhere, everywhere, and even when he had a bad turnover, I don't remember specifically when I put it in the game thread somewhere. He had a bad turnover, pass, pass, interception because he got back in the right spot. And is just more physical and more fast and has more dog than anybody on the field. Mm-hmm. Anybody. He was so good tonight. He is so fun to watch. And you you realize how little homework these Apple guys do, right? Like, now that being said, I didn't listen to the Spanish broadcast and I saw Cello at training this week, and I know he knows Rapids more so than the two anybody the almost English yeah. call. Those guys were like, oh, my God. Like, by the end, they're like, this Bombi guy is crazy. I mean, Cello, dude. Like, Bombi took on um, took on three guys in his own defensive third, turned a, did a complete 180, and outrun all three of them with the ball at his feet. Nobody was near him. Literally nobody. Like, this was the perfect showcase for Bombi because people are looking at this game because it's Messi, it's Busquets, it's Miami. They want to see him. And Bombi balled out. That just shows how good Bombi is. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts getting even more hype as the year goes on. He, I mean, anybody that watched this game heard Bombi, Bombito, Bombito, Bombito there, especially there in stoppage time. For some reason, Miami went away from, they just went to long balls. They just went to, to send it up top. I mean, it was very strange. To me, they felt a little shook, maybe, but it didn't matter because the second they sent it up, Bombi was there ahead of whoever it was because he's faster and better. It, yeah, it's and, insane. And the other thing is that we kind of to underestimate and we don't talk about as much is having Bombi out there creates such an easy um, creates such an easy job for Maxu, who now Maxu can focus on just being a wall. Hey, I'm gonna be the stopper. I don't gotta worry about distributing. I don't gotta do twenty different tasks. I can just go out there and do my job 
it makes everybody else's defensive job way better. It's easy for everybody when you have a guy out there that you know you can trust. And if you're at a place, you know that he's a literal deer running from gunshots just out there like, constantly, just, dude. Like he will you you were not you are not beating him in the foot race. I don't care crazy. who you are. It's crazy. It, and the fact that he slipped through the cracks, right, was in a Canadian academy, then junior college, then New Hampshire, and then MLS draft. It's just – it's so crazy to me, man. He he is just so good. He's so good. And I it, we're just lucky to be able to watch him. Like, really. Like, we're, we're so lucky. That guy is an S-tier defender, and he's only going to get better because he's barely played – Com- like soccer at a level even comparable to what he's doing. Yeah, because right? he was like, like in college, he was like yeah. in way USL, like at the very like in Charleston or something yeah. like that. Like it's not comparable to what he's doing now, like at all. It's he is gonna be a guy. I've I said this last podcast, I've said it now for a couple times. If you're a lower le- a lower level premier league team, if you're a championship team, or if you're in a top five league and you're not and you're right in that mid table, you're licking your chops at a chance to get a guy like Bombi on your squad. It's going to be cheaper than going out in Europe and buying somebody. You're going to get a great defender, young, that can still develop, like, and he's going to be the starting center back for Canada for years to come. Yeah. The U.S. and Mexico, our our teams are going to be struggling against Canada because a guy like Bombi, and that's going to be the fun. It's going to be fun being able to look back and be like, yeah, that was our guy. Like, Bombi's a dude. The Rapids saw it coming from a mile away, and they deserve all the credit for that. I mean, they know they're Canadians. Give it up for Porig, right? He knows his Irishman, and he knows his and he knows his Canadians, which is I'm, Himani had a really cool play too, where he like he did he split two defenders and was able to get the ball into in the midfield. Like that's the kind of thing that the Rapids were missing for years to uh, for the last couple of years, right? You didn't have a guy like Bombi that. Could just create out of any nowhere and was quick as hell and had great recovery speed. You didn't have a guy like Kamani that was just breaking down defenders, finding the right spot, and just making the right play constantly. And that's what makes it so fun that the Rapids team finally feel like they figured it out a little bit more. Mihailovic has the ball in the, at his feet a lot more than he did the first three, four games. And you can tell the difference. Two goals. The Rapids have scored a goal every game <laughs> so far. Except for- one except for the houston one except for houston which still blows my mind but whatever that's the growing pains well, I'm, yeah forget it compared we to what this team was yes. yeah like compared to what this team was a year ago we're like can we get a goal today like it's all about they have the shot to actually do it it's crazy man it really is i uh i just it's, it's crazy how much fun we get to have watching some of these guys out of nowhere and look it, there's going to be frustrations, you know. There's a lot of really smart Rapids fans on Twitter who are like making some really good points. Like, it sucks that you didn't get another one in that first half, right? It's tough that you didn't finish any of those late ones. It's tough that that you gave up two goals in two minutes, even if it's the greatest player of all time. You know what I mean? Like, that's that sucks. Uh, but like the Seattle game, right? Like we sat here and did this this same show where it's like. Man, it feels like you kind of left something on the board, but you have to be so happy in the global view of where this club is going right now. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm a victim of this, right? I step back. I am an emotional guy. I'll, I'll yes. tell you straight. Like, I've said it multiple times, and I'll stick to my takes. I remember, I said the Rapids were going to win 3-0 with Messi on the pitch. And I don't regret that at all because I looked really smart there for about like five, like for 20, 30 minutes before the first, before the second half started. I looked like a genius, Rafa one goal. <laughs> and I'm like, here comes two more, baby. He um, had a nice game. And I know there's some frustrations that he didn't score from the run of play, but the first 30 minutes he looked, I mean, I, we saw some skill from him with the ball at his feet that we hadn't seen yet, really. You know, I think he's really getting comfortable. Yeah, I I think so too. I think the biggest this the biggest issue with a guy like um uh, with Rafa and Cabral, right? It's not that they're not talented, it's not that they don't deserve to be in the starting eleven, not that they shouldn't even be in the rotation. It's more that price tag that they carry with them. Yeah. It's what's really dragging them down. Yep. And you need a lot more production from that price tag 
if you had gotten these guys on a deal like you did Connor Ronan and Max Sue, where you can buy down from that DP spot where you're not spending millions of dollars on these guys and gam or whatever, you're happy with these moves. You're yeah. like, these are guys, you can keep them, and it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good time. But when that when you have that kind of thing, when you have that kind of price tag, you expect a lot more from these guys. Yeah, and look, he, you know, my guess is he's 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 done the paperwork. He's here. That loan probably expires, and you negotiate a different price tag, right? Because he's obviously not worth that four and a half million, right? So maybe he stays as a Tam guy, right? Maybe you know, because because he won't be a DP as soon as the loan expires, because he won't have that yeah. tag, right? So. Um, maybe you can buy it down and, and use that DP tag on, on striker. Maybe, you know, who knows? Kucho's Kucho's looking rough over in, in Columbus had a red card after coming back from team discipline issues or whatever today. Get me Kucho, baby. Duncan, you know, Duncan McGuire, maybe who knows? Let's get into that at a different date. But um, it's something that the Rapids are going to have to start looking yeah, at. Here yeah, soon. Absolutely. Let's get into some game grades, but first let's talk about our friends, our newest friends, and some pretty, pretty awesome fan friends over at Toyota. Man, we like Toyota. Your front range Toyota stores are excited to begin a new partnership with DNVR, the official vehicle of DNVR. Trucks have always been a part of Toyota's DNA. For generations, Toyota has built durable legends destined for greatness and perfect for Colorado. Whether you're conquering off-road trails or hauling the weight of the world, there's a Toyota truck that's just right for you. Like the all-new 2024 Tacoma and the return of the iconic 2024 Land Cruiser coming this spring. Toyota offers 17 models with available all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive like the Epic 4Runner. And Toyota also currently offers more low and zero emission vehicles combined than any other automaker to give customers numerous choices to reduce their carbon footprint. There are 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from, like the Tundra iForce Max Hybrid Truck. And Toyota SUVs take command on the road and on the trail so you can explore the road less traveled without sacrificing smooth city rides in SUVs like RAV4 in the Grand Highlander. Or like my Highlander, which I love. It is my favorite car I've ever had, hands down. Um, Toyota is a proud partner of the Colorado Rapids and the official vehicle of DNVR. You can visit your front range Toyota stores at any location near you. Auto Nation, Toyota, Arapaho, and Centennial, Corwin, Toyota, and Boulder, Groove, Toyota, and Littleton, Mountain States, Toyota, in Denver, Stevenson, Toyota, East, in Aurora, and Stevenson, Toyota, West, in Lakewood. Shout out, Toyota. You are the newest and greatest homies of DNVR. No, Toyota's dope. I love Toyota. I've always said it. Best car out there. That's all I've ever driven. They're the best. Um, we're also brought to you by Fubo. We like Fubo. Those are the those are the homies right there. FuboTV.com slash DNVR. I mean, Fubo, if you like Denver sports and you have cut the cord and you're done with cable, Fubo's the option right there. They have 140 plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. You can stream live TV from any device. You can watch the most Colorado sports for the lowest price. I mean, that's really that's really the deal right there. You can watch immediately with a free trial. Use that free trial up, baby. Watch some, you know, watch down the stretch. You got abs and and nuggets. Um playoffs are coming. Might as well tune in for that. You got right. you got Euros and a uh, Copa America coming on Fox Sports. You can watch it all on Fubo. Like get accustomed to the interface, get into it right now. Like, why not just get Fubo? Masters next weekend. Like, you can literally watch to the end, and you can watch Mexican soccer if you want to. Try to scout some players out there the Rapids good time like I do. Like, come watch my Cholos. Come on. It, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. Uh, no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. Watch, watch local teams while traveling. Oh, on top of that. You can watch the Rockies on Fubo. You can't watch the Rockies anywhere, but you can watch them on Fubo. Uh, yep. Watch all your favorite sports, including the Rockies. Go to www.fubotv.com slash DNVR. That is www.fubotv.com slash DNVR. Sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. Shout out to the homies at Fubo. Shout all right, out. we're back. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, Mitch, hanging out, drawing room. 
DNVR Rapids. What a game. What a game. What a game. Um, man, I'm still just, I'm, I'm just still, I just, I'm hyped. That cold goal pulled me up out of the depths, man. It like, let's get, let's talk Cole real quick. We kind of went into Bombi and some other stuff. Let's talk Cole. Just a monster game from him, man. Monster. Cole's the guy, man. I thought last, I said last game yeah, wasn't his best game. Um, he struggled a bit with uh, in possession. He did, kind of didn't know where to go. But today, he he just turned it around. He's like, I'm taking over the midfield and nobody can stop me. And one thing you can tell that a lot of, from Cole and Ollie is they're great at one-twos with each other and with the wingers. They can get out there, and if they're in a tight spot, they can pass their way out of it nowadays. And that's something that you don't get very often. It's something that you don't see very often from the Rapids where they can just pass their way out of dangerous situations constantly. And that's so much fun when you have a guy like Cole and Ollie that as soon as they get the ball, they're turning, they're turning around and they're trying to go forward. That's the best part about them. He really has found a way, you know, I think, I think in his mind, if you asked him six months ago, he's a 10 right? I'm going to be a goal scorer. You know, I want to live in and around the box. And he has stepped back and the game has just opened up for him in so many ways. He's working hard. He's chasing balls all the way back to the flag. He's running up top on a break, finishing, a, you know, a fast break chance like that. He has just, he's he has completely embraced being a complete football player, right? Like he, he dropped the I need to be a goal scorer and he has picked up I need to be a good sound soccer player and I need to make my impact felt in every phase of the game. And it's been so fun to watch. And he deserved that goal because he had a all oh, that chance he had that mid calendar stretch was like so sweet. I mean, he he was just he was everywhere tonight. Like Bombi, those two, when you think about it, those two were the guys that really had their their hands all over the game or feet. It's also just kind of you talking about him just kind of stepping back and the game opening up. Now he has the liberty to kind of go where he wants to go. He's not constrained to being a 10. He has to be the creator every single time. It allows him to pull back and find the spot that's going to be the sweet spot. That's why he was able to get that goal today because he's running late. He's finding the ball. He know he knows where it's going to be, but he's not forcing anything. He's just looking at what the defense is giving him, and that's something that Cole's really good at doing. Figuring out where the defense is going to be and figuring out what they're giving him and then attacking from that position. That's the best part about what Cole's transformation into a mega eight, into that eight ten kind of role that he has. It reminds me a lot of uh, Andrea Pirlo. If we remember when he started off, he was a 10. Pirlo was a guy that was a creator, everybody, and he struggled in that role quite a bit in Inter Miami. He goes out on loan, figures out he's not a 10, comes back, plays a six, reinvents the role for everybody, and now you kind of have that. I'm not saying that Cole's going to reinvent the eight or reinvent the wheel for no, all of no, soccer. but I know what you mean. But you do see that where players figure out where they're supposed to be and what works best for them. Sometimes it's not where you're told to be. And that's what Cole has figured out. And I think that's something that Armas and Chris Little from last year have really focused on. Hey, like, hey, Cole, this is your main role, and this is how we want you to do it. And Cole has taken it and just run with it completely. Shout out to him, man. Um, all right, I'm pulling up pulling up game grades here, courtesy of Fat Mob. The homies Let's at do Fat the Mob. best and worst one for the Rapids today. Can we get a can we get a Fat Mob sponsor? Remind me to talk to Sales this week. Yeah, we should actually. That'd, That'd be, be lit. Nice. Does Spot Mob have DNVR money though? Yeah, we're big time now. We got Toyota, <laughs> baby. Um, okay. Uh, as any you know, old listeners know, any new one in in here with us after the you know saw the messy tags and jumped in here with us for the first time. Uh, once we kind of get our our big thoughts out on the game, kind of tends to go everywhere. We eventually tie them up in a bow and we jump in. We talk game grades. We always try and guess who was the highest graded Rapids player. Again, I use Fop Mob. You can probably use some other ones that might say differently. Um, but this is a surprising one this week. Drop your, you know, if you have a guess in the chat, drop it in. See who it was. Um, who who do you think, Yaya? Highest rated player today 
I think it's going to be Kevin Cabral. Close. There were three Rapids in the green, one of which was Cabral, but he was actually the third highest. Oh, rated. damn. Yeah. And then Rafa is probably up there too because of that goal. Correct. It was Rafa, even with a yellow. So you take that yellow, which I thought was a bullshit yellow, and Ted Uncle, it's hands on sight. If you see me anywhere, look out, dude. Look out, bro. Look out. You're banned from GMVR forever. You cannot drink a beer here. Dude, no bread booze for Ted Uncle. Ted Uncle's not the reason the Rapids drew or lose. Mm, mm, that, no. that was a penalty. It was, that a, was penalty. a penalty. I completely agree it was a penalty. I'm not saying it wasn't, but like the Rapids were not creating in the final third, and sure, it wasn't sure, sure, sure. it wasn't because of the ref. But God is that Ted Uncle suck. He's the worst. <laughs> okay, but yes. So Rafa Navarro. Um 85 so, minutes played, uh, 0.79 XG. So he only created, what, 0.9 XG, which sucks, right? Uh, you want to see more than that. Um, 19 to 27 and, passes, 45 touches, nine touches in the box, four or five on dribbles, um, one pass into the final third. Three recoveries. I thought his defensive work rate was pretty good. Um, yeah, surprising that he got it. Cole, Cole, 90 minutes played, one goal. Um, only 0.23 on the XG on that shot too. So nice, nice finish from him there. Um, he, uh, 82 touches, (laughs) crazy 13 passes into the final third, not the best pass, you know, only, uh, you know, no accurate crosses, two for five on accurate long passes. Um, but five recoveries, two clearances, you know, overall, I think the stats are going to say it was a little sloppy. Right, like, um, Max but the used, impact of the game was different. Like Moist was only a six point eight. I don't know how you could play a better game than Moist played. Right, it's just something. Some things game grades aren't going to give. Right, like yeah. he was a monster. Um, it's a vibe. Game yeah. grades are not a vibe. They yeah. look. It's also you got to watch the game. What was the uh, Sam Bynes? I think he might have been the worst trapper today. No. No, I mean, but he probably has a lot of passing stats, and and he did have. Oh man, I thought that goal was gonna go in. It was flagged offside, anyways. But um, worst rabbit tonight was Seb Anderson. Someone in the chat got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was bad, especially once my. He was good in the first half. Or I say he was acceptable in the first half. The second Messi came on, he saw food on that right side. Like I mean. Food. I, I was really don't blame him. Yeah, way, bro, he got ate up. <laughs> the game, the game became too big for him, which is understandable. Way you play for Rapids big. too. You've done that. Like your first, you get your one of your, you get a start in Miami. You see the side, you see the lineup, and you're like, oh, all right, I don't got to play Messi today. He comes in, and you're like, shit, shit I got to play Messi now. <laughs> like shit, <laughs> now it's Messi on my side, dude. Like, I don't blame Seb Anderson. I really, really don't. No, it's hard to be an academy kid. Get a start in Miami with hot weather, by the way, humid. Not a good, not a good atmosphere to play soccer. And you're you got Seb Anderson. You got Lionel Messi breathing down your neck, the greatest player to ever touch a football. And you're like, shit, how am I going to, how am I going to get through the next 45 minutes without looking like a complete a-hole? I just, to me, it was Sam Vine's like first half was very, there was so many, there was so many more opportunities left on the table. If he just kind of got, got the right pass, if he didn't get turned around. And that's the thing that frustrated me the most about Sam, because there were so many opportunities for him to like take over, make an impact. He kind of just left them on the table, and he he that's not something that he should be doing because he's a very talented player. Do I still think he's a great player? Yeah. Is he gonna get a custom? Of course. I just I need a little bit more from him. You know, Chris Armis ha- has kind of instilled this: if you don't know what to do, go. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think for some reason Sam, when he doesn't know what to do, thinks too much. He's not doing the just go part. Right, he is fast as hell, great with the ball at his feet, can cross it in, and for some reason he just he seems to just ah oh, what do I do? And then just kind of gets it's too too mental right now. He just feels like he's he's thinking too much. I don't know what it is because we've seen him play free flowing ball. We've seen him work those sidelines, and it's just what's what's missing. I don't like I don't know what's missing. I know what it is. I and I can tell you what it is. 
And you're okay. right. He was thinking too much. But it's that thing that uh, Cole had last year. Mm-hmm. You, you have to be the guy. Right. You have to. You came back from Europe. You have to be the guy. You have to be a key cog. And that gets to players' heads. It really, really does. It's just yeah. it's part of the game. And that's something that it took Cole, what, two-thirds of the year to figure out and understand that the game has to come to him. And I think same thing has to happen with Sam. He kind of just needs to take a step back, realize the game's going to come to him, and he doesn't have to push for it constantly. Yeah, he, he, he'll figure it out. I think we're, I don't know what game we're going to get the Sam Vines game, but we're going to get the Sam Vines game, right? The earthquake like, one seems like a great time to get it, honestly. Yeah. Look, hey, three straight results on the road. After losing almost, if you're just three straight you're results just, on the road. If you're just the fort that you were two years ago, three years ago at home, and you just keep getting positive results on the road, there's no reason for you not to be a playoff team this year, honestly. Crazy. That's insane, right? Like, you have to be. I, I just, I just, I want a home playoff game. <laughs> The one that, that we've be, had that might be a little much, which is fair. But I want one for personal reasons that I like to have fun. Yeah, of course. I mean, how much fun would we have? I mean, exactly. come on, throwing parties at the DNVR well, bar. Kevin, not only drunk. they pull up that Kevin point again because I think this is important here. This is, uh, I think B Ray pointed out, and it was on Total Soccer. The guys over at Total Soccer uh, talked about it on the show this week. Sam, Georgie, and I believe Stefan before today had already played more minutes than they played all of last year in 2023. And this is match day seven. So through six match days, they had already played more minutes. And you can tell that there's rust on them. They're... Zach today I thought had a great game. God, he looks good, bro. Like Man. Zach has become – he is the Yarby guy. It, again – you're conceding goals because you're playing a transition type of game where it's in you're inviting pressure to come to you, but you thrive off that pressure. Of course, you're going to concede, especially against the greatest player. Like, that's what it is. Like, it happens. It's part of the game. But you cannot blame him for a lot because he has kept the Rapids in so many games. The worst like, game. Dude, he- that messy goal hit both posts. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sure, it was a gorgeous shot and goal, but like, in centimeter one direction and it's out right like, like he was awesome that chip messy saw seb he was cooking seb right and said he draws it seb goes out gets back to messy comes straight back in chips it over the whole defense and zach just comes flying in yeah buries it he had a nice one that he saved from going out for a corner right on the the post uh he yeah. was just great tonight he was great he was great he, again the worst game that he's had is a. Uh... The first game. And, and honestly, like, there was two or three that he could have blocked that he was just kind of out of it. Well, besides that, I think Zach Stefan has done more good than bad, and it's not even close. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely worth the $0 they sent Manchester City, I would say. That's $0 well spent. Good job. Uh, yeah, and the other day <laughs> I saw this, like, highlight reel of all the greatest saves in MLS this year. Mm-hmm. Had Zach on it once when he had incredible save almost every week. I'm like, yeah. it's the Rapids asinine. effect. Yeah. It, it's complete yeah. asinine, dude. Like, I think uh, this team this team has just – it feels like they kind of turned a page, right? Yep, absolutely. Feel, like, the final third is still not there, but they're creating more opportunities. They have – Two goals in a run of open play the last two games. They're taking mm-hmm. advantage of their set pieces. What else do you want from a team like? I saw – okay, okay. Thank you for bringing this up, Yaya. Thank you. Um, the Apple crew today goes, uh, not great uh, – said something along the lines of, not great results from Georgie on set pieces so far this year. He, he almost buried one against Seattle that – somehow counted for an assist from MLS, right? He has at least – I don't know if the Harris first goal, that might have been a Ronin corner, but either way, he has two assists on set pieces, has a goal on a set piece, almost had another. I think he's been great. That made me so mad when they said that. I was like, what are you talking about? And that's the whole thing, right? That's That is the Apple's biggest problem. 
that their broadcast they don't do the homework. Team, their broadcast teams sometimes don't just do the homework or they struggle at times to understand the vibe of the team. And I get it. I understand it's a lot of teams. It's a lot of games. I'm not upset at it. Like, as the year goes on, they get better because they get more info. They do more games, more teams. Um, but that's kind of where you need personality to take over a little bit, right? You look at the Spanish broadcast. They have a little bit more personality. They'll they'll talk about the dumb stuff. They'll have a little bit more fun with it, and it makes the broadcast a lot funner. I don't think it's an indictment against that, but I just think they need a little. They need a little bit more help on the English side for sure. I also went on Battered Herons this week, which is a, a Miami-based uh, podcast network. Uh, they do heat stuff and, and, some, and obviously a bunch of Miami pods. And I called 2-2. So there you go. No Stradamus in the house. Mitch Stradamus. Um, I, I tried so hard, man. I really wanted that 3-0 win. That would have been the coolest shit ever, dude. We would have talked so much shit if that happened. I was talking <laughs> shit when we were up one, one. Oh, I was like... I know what I'm talking about. Get the fuck out of my face. Juaner was talking about going bald if it happened. Oh, my God. Please. Join that the would game. have been incredible. Like, okay. Um, okay. We are going to jump into some flowers, but we will do so right after the short break. And we're back. Welcome back to DNVR Raps Podcast. It is Yaya, Mitch. Chat's popping. Um, look, it's a jarring room. But it seems like a pretty fun drawing room. This feels almost winner's loungy in terms of vibes. Almost. Almost. No, Can't be I, mad. I honestly, you can't. Like, this is a – it's a fun team. What's what we want? We want it fun. Like, Absolutely. You, you are entertained week in and week out, week out. Like, it's not just I come in here and I'm like, how am I going to repeat myself because this team just lost 3-0, 2-0, 1-0 again. I don't have to do that anymore because every game seems different. seems fun. It's going to be good again. It's fun. Make the Rapids were fun again, and that's fun. I'm happy. I'm having a great time. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to start us off here, bud? Uh, yeah, I'm taking the easy one, and it's going to be a Bombi. I'm oh, did giving... you throw the graphic up? There it is. Ah, uh, there Flowers it is. from the fellas. Uh, my first one's easy, man. I'm getting it to Bombi. Dude's a beast. He's the guy. He's him. Uh, Moist, uh, Moist the Beast Bombito, man. That's his new nickname. Like, he's everywhere. He recovers. He does not give two shits if who he's playing. He's going to get in your grill, and he's going to go all out. And that's what we want from our defender. He's our guy. He gets it. He's part of the club. He's actually owner of the club at this point. It's amazing. We just got so lucky. We just got I, so lucky. We got this, so lucky. I the will rest say of the that, world missed, right? I I will say that part of the reason I think he's gotten so good is the dreads. Dreaded oh, Bombi. The Brady, dreads. Let's go. So I think it's it, it's Bombi. It has to, I think the dreads do a lot for Bombi. Ooh, DNVR Bombi shirt. Mm? Dwayne, get working, bud. I no longer have the merch inside track, so it's up to Dwayne. It should Computers be the big. Right uh, what did they used to call Babe Ruth? The Big Bombino. Bambino. Bambino. It's so now Come it's on. the Big Bombino. Did you not watch The Sandlot? Yeah, you sound like the kid years. from The Sandlot. It's been years since I watched. Come it. on. I, ever um, since the Rockies came back into my life, I've just kind of like <laughs> that's, good, that's a good point. <laughs> hey, hey, Rockies are hot, baby. Two zero, two zero at home. Oh, I don't I actually don't know what the score is. I know that they won yesterday. It was crazy. So, oh yeah, I was uh, there. Good time. Flowers for how drunk everyone got. Like, oh, good Lord. I was plastered. Unfortunately, <laughs> flowers for everyone's livers because goddamn, Denver was a mess yesterday. Um, okay, real flowers for me. Cole Bassett, baby. I know I'm not, we're not gonna go long on these first ones. Um, I'm just proud of him. I'm proud of him. He ended last season, um, after the lowest low that this club has seen in a long time. And he finished out that that's uh, the season very well. And he came in just, he's just a better soccer player. He's just, he's very good. And I listened back to our hot take episode, right? Hot takes where you got wild. And I had to put the clip about you predicting three of Miami up, of course. Um, but I knew what I was doing when I predicted that. <laughs> 
I had one where I said uh, that he would be in contention for best 11 at the end of the season and he would be the team MVP. That was my, that was my first one of my first before we got real crazy with him. Um, and maybe not best 11 right now, but he is, he's the glue that keeps it all together. You know, he's just, he's, he's so great and I'm just happy for him. Um, okay. Flowers, go ahead. Uh, I have to give flowers to Ollie LaRoth. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Ollie, Ollie dude. and Messi, man. I was like, that's so cool. Good for him, bro. Dude, like, <laughs> Ollie, dude the way Ollie is just so physical, man. Mm-hmm. He changes that dynamic of that midfield so much. The way he goes in for tackles is never backing down from anybody. That's exactly what you want from your guys. I'm excited, man. Like, when I, I the first game when I saw Ollie out there, I was like, mm, I saw him on the starting lineup. I'm like, it might be a little too early for him. I predicted talking about how it takes 2,000 minutes. He's going to hit that. I, he's yeah, gonna he's going to play that. like 2,500 or close he's to gonna, I think what's the most he plays, 2,300. He's going to play 21. He's going to hit that 2K 22. mark, man. And <laughs> I'm like, I thought I was being wild. I was being crazy, whatever. But damn, man, it's messy. It's messy. It's all he dope. Yeah, he all he's dope, dude. All he is, he does not look out of place. All he's a guy that. When you talk to people like um, Cello, when you talk to people in the organization, they just talk about the growth and how much, how hard he's worked after the, the injuries he's had, the ACL tear, and being not being able to play for a year, and then coming back to Rapids too instead of Rapids. Like he's fought through everything, and it's incredible, man! It's incredible to see Ollie, Ollie just be that guy again and be a bright spot for this Rapids team going forward. God, he's fun. He's fun. Really makes that midfield an interesting group. Um, we know Ricardo loves his his, his Rapids two boys. Uh, Yo, Sep, again, Sep first tap, loved him. Not a lot of issues. He got Sep second, second half. half bro. I felt bad. I felt, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when Messi's just diamond up that side of the field? Like You can't get here. mad. That's what I mean. Like, how are you going to get upset? Like, it's just, bro. If uh, Jerome Boateng can get tangled up by Messi in the Champions League quarterfinals, who's to say that no. Sam Anderson got get tangled up and come on. match in match day seven in an MLS yeah. game? Like, come on, come on, come on. Uh, I'm gonna go with our guy Matthew Wick down there. He said it right, man. Calvin Harris, the you know, you know the the Broncos caris- quarterback carousel graphic. That's the Rapids wingers, right? Every yeah. week it's a new combo. Harris is back. That guy's starting next week. Right, like for sure, and I want to see Kamani next to him, but it's probably gonna be Kevin again because you know, I think Kevin had right? a pretty good game, so I think Kevin Calvin, right? Like, those are the Vins on the outside, um, tons of speed, good ball control, um, and he just he makes plays, right? He's now been involved in two pretty big moments of the rapid season. Um, I think. I think Calvin's a guy, dude. We said it last year too. At the last, at the end of the at the end of the year, Calvin came on and gave the Rapids a different step that they didn't have. Uh, he's really improved with not keeping to, not keeping the ball too long, <laughs> which right. is a big a big problem that he had last year in the beginning of the year. He's been releasing the ball releasing the ball a lot quicker, and you can tell, and you can see the contributions are coming because of that. Because it's he's understanding when the ball should be out and when he should keep it a little bit longer. Um. Ooh. I think my uh, – how many more guys do you have? I can do however many more. but Okay, cool. Then uh, my next guy is going to be Kevin Cabral. Okay. Here in the penalty. Here in the – That's true. Oh, that touch to create – to get the ball as far away from him as – like, man. He he deserves he deserves credit. That for, was nice. Again, I still – Cabral, for the investment, not what you want. Take that price tag, that DP designation away from him. Yeah. He's had a couple, two to three good games. Yeah. The reason that you drew against Seattle was because of him. True. <laughs> like, yeah. he's contributed. Like, it's still not perfect. Do we need more from that spot? We do. Not trying to say any of that. But we got to enjoy the good while we have it. And right True. now, he's doing pretty good. When he plays well, you got to say he plays well. Exactly. And it's just fair. Again, I agree the price tag still sucks. But he is being better, and I do like how how 
more willing he is to run back, how more willing he is to attack when he has to. And that's what I like. He is bought into the system, and that's what I wanted. I like it. Yeah. Uh, saw a stat from Jason Maxwell at Rapids. Jason, he's just an OG of the Rapids community here. Um, the Rapids have now earned more points from a losing position through seven games than all of last season. How about that? This team has no more quit in it. That's what it is. I mean, come on. And you know, so you know where my flowers are going to go because of that is Chris Armis, our bald king. He come on. It. Come on. Look, I, we were on this pod. We were like, what the hell are they doing? Mm-hmm. Right? We were, I think everyone was. And the fact is, he has come in with a culture, he's come in and revolutionized training. Um, he's great with the media, but more importantly, he's figured out the right buttons to push in a game, right? When, and I think everyone was most worried about him managing the game, right? Just in-game tactics, adjustments, game plans going in, and just pretty clear. He's he's doing such a good job. He's doing great, and I'm I like him. He sold he sold us on himself early. That was easy. And now he's selling us on the coach. And I'm I'm just I'm really happy. I'm really happy with Armis. I mean, honestly, man, right now, Porg is looking kind of like a genius just for bringing him in. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, it's it's true. Like he's doing oh a really God. good job. And I, I again, if you look back at his Toronto stint, which is probably his worst stint ever. For any coach, like what was it like ten games or eleven games, or whatever, and you lose seven 11, one in your yeah. final, and you lose seven one in your final game, worst loss mm-hmm. in franchise history, and you come back and you can do this, just goes to show how much work and effort he's put in to improve and try to be a better coach. He's taken a step back and said, "Where do I have to improve? Where can I? Where am I doing good?" And it's you're showing dividends with a really young squad in Colorado, brand new team. Bunch of new players. What is it like? Seven new starters or something like that? Like, yeah. <laughs> are you laughing at the Armas Ten Hog win? Is that what hurt you? What do you want point, me to do? What do you want? Point, you want? point to what where it hurt, Mitch. Point to where it hurt. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, he's gonna get fired after tomorrow's game, anyway. So there you go. Well, yeah, uh, you can be out of my life forever. Um, Oh, they're never out of your life, Mitch. You know that. You're still talking about Frazier. You're still talking about Ralph, Ralph Ragnar. Right, you're right, you're right, you're they'll right, never right. be out. They're part of our lives forever and ever. Um, Sebastian Drusy just had a 11th minute of stoppage time goal to win it for Austin. That's pretty tight. He's dope. Austin um, better than I expected, honestly. Me too. Um, yeah, look, hey. Jared, all the Arsenal fans in the chat, I'm sure there's a bunch because the Rapids Arsenal crossover is real. Uh, I hope they win tomorrow too. It'll be fun. Thank you for supporting the cause. Um, but it's not going to happen and 10 hacks going to get fired. Uh, okay. Any other flowers? Anything we missed? Any other points of the game we got, got to touch on? Anything we should talk about? We got some I announcements th- coming this week. Yeah, I think we should give a flower to Rafa for scoring that penalty. Sure. If anything, great penalty, a nice penalty. score. Yeah. If anything, great penalty score. Might mm-hmm. not be the guy for the future, but at least he gets a flower just for scoring that goal. We've seen it. Jordy didn't score it, and <laughs> you drew a game. So you got to give credit or credit to on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we are doing a, a package uh, with the homies at C38. We'll have some, you know, a pre-game, a pre-bus meetup at DMVR. Um, Tickets to the game, uh, tailgate passes. Um, maybe I'll be giving out some some scarves or shirts or something if you're there early hanging out with us. Um, so look out for that. That's coming up uh, this week. We'll be announcing that on on the socials. Uh, should be a fun time. Uh, love when the when the crew comes through. Um, if you want to see a toasty yaya, that usually happens on those days. <laughs> Post game yaya with sunglasses, just a, a vibing. Um. <laughs> those are usually game days when I'm not working. Can I ask my wife about yesterday at the at the Rockies game? That's when full yaya send. just stops caring about life. For a few yeah, hours. full send, right? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 
Um, that's I think that's kind of it on housekeeping. Um, I can't think of anything else. I'm just I'm happy. I'm in a good spot. I'm excited for the show this week. I think I think giving some time of this and some rewatch, I think you're really gonna be able to pull out some nice things. Um, I think there's. I don't know. I'm excited to rewatch it. I'm excited that we have a lot to talk about midweek. Um, let's keep this streak going on road results hmm? in San Jose. Just what's your gut say? Streak keeps going? I want to say a win, man, but it's just, it's so hard in the MLS. Like, there's just so many good teams, man. And, like, it's any given, every given, any given Saturday, right? Like, you just never know when it's going to hit. And it's just so hard for me to say, like, oh, it's a win on the road. Well, yeah, I never pick a win on the road. Um, I go out of my way not to, actually. Um, but uh, we're here. It's been a fun season so far. It's been a fun seven. It's seven matches. We've had a blast. I'm having a freaking blast. Um, all right, I guess it's on me to finish this one out later, Yaya. Um, make sure you are a diehard member at the DNVR.com. Support local sports journalism. Um and podcasting and vibes and in the bar. Uh, if you're not hard to get a discount at the bar, right? How many bars are you going to go to where you get a discount just because you're a member of something? You have apps playoffs, Nuggets playoffs, Pits, Rockies, um, all of that stuff. You get 15% off your bar tab. Easy. Um, you get 20% off the DMVR locker. I got my new Rockies Defend the Party Deck. All right. I'm- all right. You're back. Uh, I'm already doing most. I'm all there. Is, I'm doing the plugs that I usually do, so you can still do the plugs you usually do. Go ahead. All right, people. You know the deal. Follow us on the other one. <laughs> you already know what you guys got to do. You want to make a man happy? Go follow us there on Twitter. We really appreciate it. Five star review wherever you hear this podcast, or the Apple Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere. We really appreciate all those. Just shows that there's a bigger Rapids community than people like to give credit to. Also, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Likes on these videos means likes for me and Mitch, and that means our self-esteem will go over the roof. And you guys want that. If you guys like us, you guys we'll want keep, our self-esteem. We'll keep getting cool ad reads like Toyota. Like Yeah, Fubo. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, next thing we'll be like sponsored by Prime Energy Drink or something, and you guys are going to be hyped. Uh, we'll get Logan Paul on the podcast. You know, it'll be – be a sure. bad good time. Mr. Beast like, will be doing a challenge with us. Yeah, um, like, but yeah. that's all because you guys like the video and like what we do. If you don't do that, we'll never get Mr. Beast on our YouTube channel. Come on, guys. Come on. But we really appreciate it, guys. Subscribe as well. It's always a good time to be a Rapids fan, even when it feels like it's not. Um, and we appreciate you very much, all of you guys. Absolutely. So do all that stuff. Um, watch United beat Liverpool tomorrow morning. And more important than all that, as we always say, baby, up the pits. We all silly like the mayor. 